Welcome to Clean Skies News. I'm Dan Goldstein. More than two weeks after an explosion and fire sank the drilling rig Deepwater Horizon in the Gulf of Mexico, oil continued to spill into the waters off of Louisiana at a rate of 200,000 gallons a day. The disaster may have already eclipsed the 1969 Santa Barbara blowout, which spilled more than 3 million gallons and could exceed the 11 million gallon spill of the tanker Exxon Valdez in 1989. Joining me now to talk about just what British Petroleum is doing to cap this well is Michael Economides, Professor of Chemical and Biological Engineering at the University of Houston. Professor, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, let's start with the latest news this morning out of Louisiana. BP engineers were able to cap one of the three leaks on the rise of the pipe that is on the seabed floor. However, they said it will not reduce the flow of oil. Why is that? Um, because they still have to plug the other ones. The pressure is going to be stopped where they actually plug the leak, but it's going to probably build up in the other two locations. In fact, it is a possibility, temporarily at least, that the rate may increase, that is, the leaking rate may increase because of what they've, been, they've done until they plug the rest of them. Yeah, and that's really quite a bit of a debate over just how much oil is spilling each day. First, we heard it was 1,000 barrels a day, then 5,000, uh, then perhaps as much as 20,000 or even 100,000 barrels a day. Why can't BP and the Coast Guard get a handle on how much oil is actually leaking out right now? Oh, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a technical issue. Uh, it's not that people are hiding things from you. Um, here is the problem, very, very quickly. Uh, uh, when you develop a leak, um, the hole actually may get enlarged. This may sound a bit too technical for your audience, but as the hole increases just by because of erosion, as things flow through, uh, the friction pressure drop is uh, inversely proportional to the diameter raised to the fifth power, which means that if you double the diameter, uh, you may increase the production rate by a factor of 30 or something like that. Uh, we know this stuff. I mean, these things ha happened before, and it's something that I have, in fact, anticipated that the rate will go up for a while. Uh, something fighting against it is the pressure dissipation. That is, the pressure itself will go down naturally. So eventually, the two things will equalize, even if nothing happens. But for now, you're going to see these ups and downs in the rate. Now, we, we know that the, the, the pressure underwater at, at, at 5,000 feet is as much as 2,500 uh, PSI, uh, pounds per square inch. Did the, did the drill it hit a particularly high pressure reservoir, and that's why this oil spill is, is, is flowing out as much as it is? Oh, no, no, no. This has nothing to do with that. That pressure in the bottom of the ocean is peanuts compared to the pressure that the well has encountered. The well may have encountered 30,000 PSI or pressure in the bottom of the reservoir. Uh, this is a highly overpressured zone. Uh, this is very typical, by the way, of that part of the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and they haven't really had problems before. This must be considered as a freak accident, by the way, by any stretch of the imagination. And I realize a lot of people want to play, play the blame game. But the truth of the matter is that even in the best of cases, things like this would happen. Think of it like an airline, airline ac accident, really, in many ways. Well, let, let's talk about the, the, the effort so far to cap the well. The blowout preventer at the wellhead still has not functioned as it was supposed to. Why is BP, do you think, having so much trouble getting it to activate? Um, I, don't, I don't really know, and I don't want to speculate. I have my own theories, by the way, on, on what permeated this whole crisis. And I think that it was a composite of several things. The BOP should have helped. It did not. Um, I, I have no idea. It was tested, apparently, just before the accident, and it worked like a jewel. So I don't know if something, these are mechanical things, you do realize. Something may not happen uh, at the right moment, uh, or maybe they followed the wrong procedure. It could be, in other words, in my airplane accident analog, a pilot error compounded by mechanical errors, you know, so mechanical flaws. So it's really freak. Uh, I mean, I, I, there were a lot of things that should have taken place before anything like this happened and apparently did not. 
One of the things that, that uh, there's been speculation is that the reason why the, the blowout preventer is not active is because either there's drill bit or uh, casing that's in the BOP that's preventing that from closing. Uh, is that a possibility? Yes, of course. I mean, it may have shifted upwards, but all of that may have been the result of the hellacious pressure in the bottom of the well and because probably the cement that was put around the casing didn't set properly. Uh, all of those are possibilities. There must be something stuck, in other words, over there that is preventing the flanges of the BOP to actually close on themselves. And one of the things we've heard quite a lot about is the use of an acoustic switch uh, uh, that's required in some other countries like Brazil to remotely trigger the BOP if, for example, uh, the rig has to be evacuated. This one apparently did not have one. Should they be required on U.S. rigs? Well, actually, I have personally been involved in some of these technologies and so on. We have something called a piezoelectric uh, device that you can actually activate with a, instead of an acoustic signal, with an electrical signal. Uh, it's going to take a cable to go down there. So there are many things to do. Uh, I think that the technology is improving. Uh, this was a very, very robust technology, by the way, in itself. As I said, it must be a number of things that have happened. Uh, I have been very critical, by the way, in the past, if you look at my writings of BP and their safety record elsewhere. I'm not ready to cast aspersions on this one yet, uh, but I am not, you know, I'm not owned by the oil companies, you know, so when I see something, stay tuned, I'm going to publish it. Are but you? I'm just saying that for this one here, I, I'm not ready to, to say because it's been very intriguing to me what happened. We, we've reported on some of the uh, uh, safety issues that BP has encountered, for example, in 2002. They had a near blowout not far from uh, where this blowout was. Um, do you believe that BP uh, has a lot of work to do when it comes to safety? Oh, I think they have a lot of work to do in a number of things, by the way. Uh, uh, there are some things that we have reported in the magazine that I edited, the Energy Tribune, uh, my managing editor, Robert Bryce, has been personally very, very uh, critical of BP uh, for a number of things, not just this, by the way, a, a culture, in other words. You may recall the Alaska pipeline, the Texas City. It's the same company, you realize. Um, for this one here, uh, what you mentioned earlier on, the, the near blowout, that's not an example because there are many near blowouts. The Gulf of Mexico uh, has a lot of low circulation, a lot of kicks, as it sounds, K-I-C-K. Kick is when an unwanted gas intrusion comes into the pipeline. So other companies experience that, but they don't go through this uh, nightmare that these guys are going through. Um, as I said, uh, we'll, uh, we'll figure it out eventually. As a, it, it, it's exactly analogous to an airline crash. Who caused what and why? Okay, that's really where we are right now. And I recommend to most journalists not to get too much on tangents or speculation, especially if, uh, along with people who don't understand these things, and, and start speculating because it would be a mud on people's face if eventually we find what really happened. Last question, uh, BP obviously is very hard at work trying to cap this well. They are fabricating uh, a casing that is supposedly uh, will be able to cap this well, at least part, uh, partly, and pump out some of the oil. Uh, do you think this is going to work, and how long might it take for this well actually to finally be capped? Well, it's not BP that is working on that, by the way. They have a, a, some of the best contractors in the world right now. Incidentally, one of the things that we are forgetting, uh, some of the guys that died in the accident, by the way, were some of the very best in the world, okay? Uh, and we should not forget that there was a tragedy involved with this, too. Uh, so they have employed some of the very best people from everywhere to do this, and I'm pretty confident that this is going to be uh, taken care of before too long. I, I truly don't think that the overall environmental damage will be uh, as dire as some people have been saying, uh, but they really have to get their ducks together, and they are not yet, I think. All right, Professor, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we've been talking with Professor Michael Economides of the University of Houston. I'm Dan Goldstein, and you've been watching Thanks Guys News.